Oh, hey. Welcome to the We're Going to Hell podcast. That was your one-man show intro. <laughs> oh, hello. Hey. Didn't oh, hey. see you there. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. I can't see your signal. <laughs> I know. I know. I was. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the We're Going to Hell podcast. Um, I'm Caleb Barge. We are live on YouTube right now. Uh, we do it every Wednesday. Um, every Wednesday. Yeah. Um, Mike's got some... Um, promos to talk about so let's right now yeah yeah right now motherfucker <laughs> see in the beginning and at the end i'm mike hernandez by the way uh and i've got promos i have uh a promo this oh is, man this, this is bombing already. you don't know what you're doing do you <laughs> no no i don't feel like i, I, I what i can't do a promo like right off the bat yes you can no you gotta we, you gotta you gotta throw it in there we, are you fucking serious <laughs> it's oh, not a hey, subtlety okay, do you want issue. me to help you want me to help you hey mike you ever use women's clothing you ever tried it on no, I haven't. But, but guess but what? If, if I, I would, would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you would, where would you go? Uh, uh, heartbreaking Donuts. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> Mike, Mike, I know, I know where you can get a job. Yeah. <laughs> where, where? <laughs> it's called the Trump administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, shit. Yes. I'll they will hire it. you. I'll make it. They'll hire anybody. They win. Yeah. Oh, man. Poppy up power. You'd fit right in. Com. <laughs> I mean, you'd be out in a week. I really hope that company do, never but. listens to <laughs> this <laughs> episode. <laughs> com, man. Yeah. Or, your, Poppy or your ladies. I don't wear need. women's clothes, but if I did, I'd just cover myself in hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a dirty boy covered in hot sauce. That'd be a great t shirt for yeah, Smoky. A hot sauce t shirt. What's the. What's the. Pr- little tang. <laughs> The pr- what's the promo code you can use uh, to get ten- Raven Wolf? Yes, the code Raven Wolf to get ten percent <laughs> off your Robin purchase. Wolf, yes, I like to say. And uh, and Poppy Apparel. And then uh, what's the dot com? What's the other one? Uh, heartbreaking Dawn Sauces. The delicious sauces. Oh my God, Jesus! <laughs> I mean, in, in his defense, they are pretty <laughs> delicious sauces. Delicious don't, sauces. Don't look at like sauces. somebody else to be like, this is fine. I don't know what. No, I'm yeah. Why is, why is this guy Why are you looking for me for it's help? I want to watch a bird. Yeah, I don't sauce. Know. <laughs> sauce. No. It's got an S. It's spelled S A. It's not the desolation of smell. Hot sauce. 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 Can I? Sauce. Fucking say it. I'm breaking going sauce says. See that? Yes. Sauces. You I know saw, why? Uh, yeah. Yeah. How are we going to sauces, my friend? Uh-huh. Delicious, mm-hmm. hot, mm-hmm. spicy. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you if you give them the cold, <laughs> we're going to hell. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. You get a discount. Oh, How sorry. much? How much? Uh, you get a free poppy. Up- no. <laughs> this uh, is the angriest <laughs> podcast promo I've ever seen. Yeah. You get, yeah, you get twenty percent like, off. Well, yeah. Really? What? What? What code do we put into stamps.com, motherfucker? <laughs> Prove we should be yeah, doing what the this. Fuck, Mike. <laughs> no, twenty percent. Twenty percent off. Send you to the Trump administration. Twenty percent off your purchase at heartbreakingdons.com. I gotta save this. Um, then Raven Wolf for ten percent off. Uh, for Poppy Apparel. Poppy Apparel. I think Mike did a great job, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a future in this. Yeah, I can that's do like, this. That's, that's like when an yeah. angry mother yeah. makes the son clean yeah. his room and be like, let's yeah. see how clean your room is. <laughs> hmm, yeah, there's I'll clean floor, it this way. That's, everywhere. Clean it this way. that's Alex Fasella. Everybody, I, you know him, you love him. Um, we do you have, love me? No. And we, yeah. Kiki doesn't. She fucking hates you. Who? Yeah, that's, that's when song. she left you. Who's yeah. Kiki? That song <laughs> that I hate. Um, it's a we have in the studio today, Whoosh. we're welcoming Don't back we're Keith about. Summers. Thank you. Thank you. It's Keith Summers back. is back. Yeah, nice and have you back. we also have a very special guest, Philip Giambri. Giambri. Hey, Phil. Philip Giambri. I love your tattoos, by the way. Thank you. Mescaline. Thank you. Thank you. I like his bottle of water. Doors of perception. <laughs> yes. His bottle of water. One of those is much <laughs> yeah, more yeah. permanent. Yeah. 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 That'll get the fl- juices po- flowing into this podcast. Poland Spring. Poland Poland yeah. Spring. yeah it bur- when you burp, hint. it smells like a brewery. It's good. So welcome, man. Thank you for coming, man. We actually wanted to, Keith was telling me about how you were in a submarine during, when was it? Uh, the Cold War. I went in the Navy in 59, but I was on an aircraft carrier, and I went on a submarine 1961 to 63. I did four patrols. Wow. That was where we were going against Korea or uh, uh, after? Russia. 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 Cold War. Cold War. Yeah. You getting yeah. flashbacks these days? Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, oh man! Oh yeah, that's a, yeah. Uh, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Bay of Pigs invasion, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Tr- how were you guys in there, man? How, how you, were you guys nervous? Well, Did you? you get a, no, <laughs> he was on a Cold War sub and he was fine. Yeah. No, well, he, <laughs> you get 121. I forgot hot. I was there most of the time. Cold War sub just having a really lemonade. Hungry. Yeah, I just got really hungry. <laughs> you get 100, <laughs> yeah. 100 breaking yeah. down yeah. sauces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, please let him yeah. talk. I know, yeah, please. Yeah. 120 highly skilled men going to sea for three months. 
comeback of 60 happy couples. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! That's good. Oh, man. So you, so, so you, def- that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely resurfaced. That cold war wasn't right? cold for no, long. No, we were just, you, did, you were, you were no. underneath the water for two years. No, no, oh, oh. no. We would go on uh, 60 to 70 day patrols usually. Uh, we would be three months on, three months off, three months on, three so months So three off. months underneath the water. Uh, well, going out, patrol, okay, refitting, okay. but okay. actually, usually 60 to 70 days submerged. God damn, wow. yeah, dude. Do you, 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 how bad is it to, to not have fresh air? Like, you know, actually, <laughs> yeah. I hate being you know? in my office yeah. job for nine hours, much yeah, less yeah. underwater Word. in a Indeed. dark against it, the Ruskies. It's kind of cool because you make your own water and you make your, your own oxygen, so they can adjust the oxygen levels to make everybody sleepy or make everybody really pe- peppy shit. and happy. Holy huh. shit. You know, that's how, that's how they stop the gay sex from happening. Yeah. <laughs> or, or turn it on if they're getting a little mutinous. Yeah. Like, okay, we they're got like, just, right? just the gay dial. Yeah, he's getting horny. Turn it. the oxygen level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they're yeah. getting mad. Turn the gay up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 that's what they call her coming out, by the way. I always thought that you know that that was a myth. You know, like I heard the, the thing about uh, they would put certain things in, in the food in the military to keep everybody like chill or not so salt sexually Peter? charged. Are you talking about salt, Peter? yeah, I forgot the name of it. Yeah, is that that's, what they called it? That was I, a rumor. That was a rumor. But that's a, that, there, no, there's no true. that's based on that's when you're 20 years old. There's not too much that can stop you. At, at <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. like we're I, under attack. The, is the church, only thing. Is a, the church didn't work either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you made your own water. We we made our own water from seawater. We made our own okay. air from seawater. Uh, we were wow, totally self sufficient. The only That's crazy. Thing, the only reason that we would have to come back after sixty to seventy days, we ran out of food. Okay. And the farts. No, <laughs> we had fart <laughs> contests right. actually. Really? Wow. Yeah. A lot of entertaining things. What water. kind of food did you eat? Uh, Submariners have the best food in the Navy. Uh, really? Once a week, we would have steak and lobster. That would oh be filet God. mignon. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah so we, had, we had extraordinarily good food. Water. They catered to us very well with food. I they understand should. things have yeah. changed a lot since then, but that was one of the prime reasons for volunteering for submarine service, the quality of food. And really? The, the lifestyle was decent. You didn't have to put up with chicken shit stuff like the rest of uh-huh. the Navy. Yeah. No inspections. and you grew, We wore what they called poopy suits, which were like jumpsuits, and we wore leather sandals and grew beards, so nobody really bothered us about anything. Nobody wore rank pins or buttons with medals or anything like that. Everybody knew who everybody was. Everybody was cool. You did your job, and yeah, they, you yeah. were respected for the work that you did. That was about it. That's cool. That yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, there's no like, yeah, that sounds pretty like. No chicken shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, no smoking, right? Oh, no, we smoked like hell then. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wow, I that's smoked great. a pipe, cigar, cigarette. They don't allow that anymore, but we wow. did. Yeah, so you, how, would, you would yeah. think when you're making your own air, they'd be a little more serious. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's ours, goddammit. Yeah. So how do you how do you make your own air? <laughs> they have uh, what they call scrubbers, oxygen scrubbers. Okay. And basically, they take seawater in, and they separate all the chemicals in the seawater. They scrub the water, and they pull the oxygen out of it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They take fresh water out of it, and whatever's left over, saline's or whatever, they dump back in the ocean. Wow. So it's it's a it's a fairly expensive process, but not complicated. Uh-huh. So they've been doing that for a long time now, so they're good at it. Wow. <laughs> I'm speechless. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're restarting that cold war, so yeah, yeah, we're yeah. hopefully going to get some underwater lobster. I mean, you know, I love that movie, but, you know, I wish they'd told me more about this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Which movie? You know, the, for the, Red the, October? Yeah, yeah. The you know, the Gene Hackman, Denzel Washington one. Yeah. Not that. Yeah. yeah, like I, I that was all you know Crimson Tide. Yeah, Crimson yeah. Tide. That's what well, I'm saying. Well that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that like, movie hey, all give us a little more like that, that, yeah. I, I wanted to know some more stuff where's, like that. Where's the pipe smoking? Your 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 sounds more like the movie Life Aquatic. If you want kind to, of. That was if, you want, if you want to see what like real submariners yeah. are like, there's a comedy movie called Down Periscope with Kelsey Graham. I've seen that. that okay. is it, that is what submarine life is really like, the, rather really? than what the government That's puts the last out. movie I would think. <laughs> wow. wow. Did, 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 was it was it a, a guy who, who served that wrote that or? I don't know, but it, it was very close. To that and you and the other extreme of that would be the German Das Boot, which is very real. Oh, that's a good movie. Also. I like that one. So mm-hmm. those two, those two movies are the closest to real. Hunt for Red October was kind of a fantasy piece. Okay. Right? Yeah. I like that movie also. But same, it was just crazy. Same with Crimson Tide, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that was like, yes. Yeah. However, oh, that man. that new Tom Clancy series, uh, Jack Ryan, is very good. I just saw. I'm gonna check that out. So how did you how do you get to work in a submarine? What you have to it's do? All, it's strictly voluntary. Really? Uh, I was on an aircraft carrier, and uh, 
they put me in a boiler room, uh, which was about 12 decks below the water line and about periscope left on a a submarine. Uh And uh, all the people that worked down there got their first pair of shoes when they went in the Navy, and they were all from very rural areas. Literally, they got their first pair of shoes. Uh And they hated people from the city. So their mission in life was that if you were from New York or Philadelphia or Chicago or any city, they would try to break you. So that was huh. their mission in life, and they would do highly illegal things, let you sit on the top of the boiler cutting asbestos for a couple, oh, couple shit. hours. Oh, shit. Wow. They killed you. Really stupid shit. Yeah. So uh, my retaliation at the time was uh, when I had to make coffee, I would piss in the coffee pot for them. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> take that, take that, take that. Oh, yeah, well yeah. done. Yeah. A little and asbestos, like a, like a latte? A little, yeah, yeah. Shit. Uh, so, so I, yeah so it's I, foam. I, it's I did, fine. I, I didn't go over too well with the crew there, so they put me on, yeah. on mess cooking to get rid of me. Mess cook. Every department has to supply mm-hmm. people who work in the galleries and the kitchens and stuff. And I was doing really fine. I was up for mess cook of the month until I hit a guy in the head with a mop. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? How do how do you hit him in the head with a mop? Well, I... I was trying to get this award for mess cook of the month, and I just swabbed <laughs> my floor down before the inspectors came in, and this guy came out of the meat locker carrying a bunch of drip, meat dripping blood and oh, stuff all over my I floor, shit, yeah. and I got pissed off, and I just threw the mop at him and hit him in the head. Oh. So the punishment for that was putting me in the garbage grinder, which was like uh, I was born and raised in the Bramble Bush, you know, that m- bunny movie where uh, the burr rabbit gets thrown in the... Br- Anyhow, okay, yeah. that's where all the all the, <laughs> like intel- a wood chipper? All the intellectuals yeah. on the ship wind up in the garbage room because you oh. cause problems with people. So I was like being in heaven. We yeah. had our own sleeping berths because we smelled so bad. No one wanted to be near us, <laughs> uh-huh. and uh, no oh, one ever man. bothered us. As long as the garbage disappeared, they didn't care where it went or who did it uh-huh. or how it was done. So we just sit in there and play cards and smoke and talk and you know philosophize all day long. But yeah. it was great. That was. But I every day I put in an application to get off the aircraft carrier. And I finally got assigned to submarine school. Wow. What's submarine school like? Submarine school basically is um, its very different now. Now it's uh, been vastly pussified. Uh-huh. Pussified? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, what they try to do is they try to test you because when you're with 120 men on a submarine, if anything goes wrong, the only people that can fix it are the 120 men on the submarine. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to come and help you. The government's not going to help you. You can't radio for help. Mm-hmm. You're in trouble. You have to rely on your friends. So nobody wants to go to sea with somebody that they don't trust. So the first part of going to submarine school yeah. is to test whether you have the capacity to withstand pressure. Uh, they put you in a, uh, a room and they flood it with water. And you and a couple other people have to try and stop all the flooding. And every time you stop something, they flood another area or start another leak. And so they try and see if you panic. And if you panic, boom, you're out. It's like the garbage compactor scene in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, I think there's a squid in here. <laughs> What's that eye? <laughs> this, is, this sounds pretty That's intense. They, they, it sounds fun. They, they put you in a burning room and uh, with a couple guys, and you have to put out the fire. And basically, they're trying to see if you panic. Mm-hmm. And if you panic, you can't. Uh, function well, and they don't want you on a submarine. And then when you get on a submarine, uh, you're considered a non-qualified puke. In other words, you don't really exist in the real world because you're not contributing anything. And until you qualify and get the submariner's pin, no one really trusts you with anything and can't rely on you. So they make your life very miserable, uh, both emotionally and mentally harassing you Mm -hmm. and making sure that you do the... Any free time that you ever have, you can't be watching movies or reading books or anything. You're learning the systems on the submarine so that when someone tests you, you know what you're doing. And when you finally qualify, then you're accepted into that brotherhood, and it's an international brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's ever served in a submarine, we have an international organization. We go to different countries every year. We've all been through the same thing. There's no flags and no politics because we know when you get in trouble, nobody's going to help you but you. So we've all been through that. (coughs) <coughs> and uh, we don't wave flags at anybody. When you go to sea, they, there's things called marker buoys that is supposed to release when the submarine is in trouble. And it goes to the top and has telephone and communications equipment and stuff. Okay. Well, they weld those down so that they don't rattle when you go to sea. 
having oh, them welded shit. having them welded down means no one's going to find right. you, and they don't want anyone to find you. Wow! <laughs> oh. Holy shit! Wow. Because if generally you're somewhere you're not supposed to be, so you know every country operates the same way, and you understand that, which is why we have a very tight brotherhood of uh, people. Just you're like surrounded Dan just by death. You're surrounded by water, just pressure. Oh, just trying <laughs> yeah. to get into your boat. You know, it's pretty crazy. So, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You know, I'm just curious. Like, so when, when you you get above the water and you get back to the mainland after sixty or seventy days, what's that first twenty four hours like? Like, what, what, do, what do you do? Hookers. Like, I wouldn't even. <laughs> what would you, do? Well, you already had <laughs> filet mignon and lobster. It's not like you're gonna go have a nice meal. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's food I, was I, better I, in the summer. Yeah, you yeah. save your, you get Chinese food, save some money, you get a prostitute. Yeah, right. Oh, two. Well, oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it, you, you get. Smuggle them on. We make our tattoos. own prostitutes out of seawater. These are very impressive tattoos. tattoos, by the way. I like them. This, this very is called yeah. Rosie's Wool Knickers. Oh shit! Uh, I operate. We operated out of Scotland for two years. Okay. My patrol, and um, I had a girlfriend whose name was Rosie. And uh, sounds like a song already. Because I was an excessive drinker, I assumed that we weren't allowed in dance halls in the the nice places in town because I was a, a town drunk, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. But after about a year and a half, uh, when I qualified it and got my dolphins, they took me up to Glasgow, which was the big city. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to this place called the Beresford Lounge, and they have a ceremony where everyone who's qualified on the submarine can order a drink. You could order a grasshopper, you could order a martini, you could order a rum, and they put them all in one pitcher. And then they take your dolphin pins and throw them in there, and then you have to chug lug the whole pitcher oh. and catch the dolphins in your teeth if you don't drop dead. <laughs> and, you're, and you're not allowed to go in the bathroom and puke or anything. Yeah. So if, if, if I you could just do, do it right there. I could do that. I could do it. I know it. Well, when you're 20 years old, a lot of things Yeah, you could do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, le I left there with a very drunk friend and two hookers. No, I told you two hookers. And <laughs> <laughs> you don't just get one. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, that like that McDonald's you know. Happy Meals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. When yeah. we got to the hotel, I discovered that one of my girlfriend's best friend was working in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I had a little di disagreement with her, and she broke a bottle and chased me around naked with it for a while. But, Sexy uh, as fuck. <laughs> And you really make it chasing you with a bottle? I, I, yeah, yeah, Sounds I, Tarantino. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I left there barefoot and bleeding. And oh, uh, I realized on the train back to Danoon, where we were stationed, that my girlfriend was a hooker. Oh, shit. Because oh. Uh, what a twist. the Russian fishing fleet used to come in and re refuel and restock food in Glasgow every month. But the sailors weren't allowed ashore because they were afraid they would run away. Mm -hmm. So they would bring like 300 hookers out to all these 20 ships that would come in. Mm -hmm. And they would make enough money in a weekend to live for the whole month so they wouldn't have to work. So my girlfriend always said she was going up to visit her grandmother. <laughs> and innocent me had no reason oh. to doubt her uh -huh. until I run wow. into her best friend in a, in a whorehouse. Oh, wow. <laughs> you catch anything? <laughs> you catch, catch anything? Irony <laughs> is what he caught. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Irony. Yeah. That's fucking, yeah. So it's just basically when you get to shore, it's just partying a little bit, right? Well, well in, those bit, days, in those days, yeah. there was a, I don't know if you, you've noticed how many commanders of submarines get dismissed now for conduct, on, you know, not conditional to the Navy or for leadership. <laughs> the Me Too movement. Ba basically, <laughs> the world yeah. changed when the tailhook scandal happened. I don't know if you guys What's oh, that? Yeah, What's I remember that? that. What's that? What is that? The tailhook scandal was uh, uh, guys like John McCain, who were like fighter, fighter jocks, were a lot like submariners. They were considered like pirates. They have their own rules. They make their own thing. Mavericks. You, yeah, you mm -hmm. go out and you act Rose. crazy whenever you're not trying to get killed by people. Yes. So uh, I think that you deserve that. A, a, bunch of air, a bunch of aircraft carrier pilots had a convention in Las Vegas, and they got busted for having hookers in all their rooms and stuff, and it was <laughs> this gigantic, like, everyone was surprised all of a sudden. These yeah. are fucking sailors, goddammit, in the sea That's out what there. what you do. They you know? I've been that, underwater for six months. Smelling fish. After that, everything became very politically correct, and it's been getting progressively worse ever since. Oh, it seeped into you the goddamn submarines. You know it's gonna, in the comedy clubs. It's in <laughs> submarines. Like, what the fuck? You gotta, you gotta put them, you gotta send these people out to sea for, for months at a time. And see how they come back. They, they yeah. come, the kids coming back now have PTSD because they don't have any means of release. When we came back, we had three months of just acting crazy for three months. And right. was, yeah, you need to get out of your system. Nobody yeah. cared what we did. We went back. We worked hard for three months. So that, that 
the kids now have support no, the troops. God damn it! Yeah, they mm-hmm. have no release now, so they're under pressure all the time. They do longer deployments. They have no no ceremonies at sea that they're allowed to do. It's considered a hazing now, which we had ceremonies for when you cross the equator, when you cross the Arctic Circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had uh, biggest dick contests, or you know, loud, <laughs> loudest. Oh, well, you guys have a lot of free time down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's better than beating somebody to half to death like yeah, the frats. Exactly. The frats yeah. do. That's yeah. like a, it's so, like a so big the, dick contest. There was always planned activity. Activity so that you could get a little crazy without uh, you know, hurting anybody. Yeah. But now that they're not allowed to do any of that, there's women on submarines. They're not allowed to have any naked pictures or skin books or anything like that anymore. It's very <sighs> different. And these yeah. kids are getting off. They're, they they have PTSD just from unreleased tension from three years of you know being underwater. Yeah, post-traumatic dick disorder. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Almost. Am I giving away? <laughs> he spelled it wrong. It, yeah. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> but I mean, that's the CIA is going to be waiting out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the CIA definitely listens to this podcast. Give away all the secrets. <laughs> all me, Elon Musk. Uh, Why did you tell them down Periscope is so accurate? Yeah, it is. That was our secret. Yeah, right. I can't believe like that is like a big thing where it's like prostitution is going to make you get in trouble with the military. The prostitutes have all the information you could ever want to know about any military activity going on. They know what uh, ships are going shit, They do. Oh, my <laughs> God. Right. No, no, it's, it's no, they're the Edward Snowden of fuckery. <laughs> it's, it's, their, it's their business. They have yeah. to know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, that's men get mouthy when we fuck. We, we never had any uh, signs on our submarine. Everything was painted black. There was no numbers or names. Mm. We never wore any badges or identifications to show which ships. You could ask any any hooker, you know, when's the Abraham Lincoln coming in? Oh, but they'll be in on the 12th. Yeah, yeah. They're coming in at 3 and a half. They knew, wow. they knew every yeah. ship movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Got a sonar machine going. Yeah. Oh, my God. The hookers know everything. They do. My, my girlfriend, uh, when I stopped seeing her when I found out she was a hooker, and <clears throat> she used to call up the ship at night, which is, you know, was a what are you doing? Top secret submarine, and she's <laughs> calling the ship. Got the fucking to, thing. She's smart. To talk Won't to me. believe the day I had. So hookers are hard workers, dude. The executive sure. officer yeah. calls me yeah. in after like the third or fourth time she does this, and he said, "I'd like to know how a civilian have access to a top secret submarine <laughs> phone number that can call up, and she's asking for you. I need you to explain that for me." I always said, she has a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's fucking getting the business going. Wow, that's interesting. I don't. That I love. It sounds like a, it sounds fun. It was fun. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, you were allowed to be crazy. Uh, and uh, we took full advantage of it. Mm-hmm. That's why all these people that criticize John McCain, he crashed five planes and stuff. He did a lot of stupid shit. He always yeah. admitted it. It was different times then. The astronauts did the same thing. Mm-hmm. They were always getting DUIs and getting crazy. And Drunk driving in space. That's all the right stuff. Yeah. You, yeah. you go to space, stuff. you come back, and you just fucking party your ass off. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. could have died. What else yeah. are you going to do? The thing is, you could have exactly, died. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So fuck it. I, I'm going to fuck. Party yeah, I'm going to get drunk off. and fuck. So yeah. I, so I, I got to ask. I, I've always heard this this thing about, the, you know, we know less about what's underneath the ocean than we do mm-hmm. about what's going on in, in, in our galaxy. Uh-huh. We don't swim I, I, enough. Do you want to weigh in on that? I mean, like, well, well, I mean, you've been under there. Like, I, I, mean, I could tell you some things. I was a sonarman, so I got to listen to everything that was happening. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to whales and all those beautiful moments that they have on mm-hmm. recordings now that <coughs> people listen to to meditate. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's what a whale we, sounds we like. We also, while we were on patrol, we were a missile submarine waiting to fire missiles. So we really didn't have to do a lot other than stay in our patrol area so we could be within range of our targets. Mm-hmm. So what we would do is, whatever our patrol area was, we would map the bottom of the ocean Oh, nice! with sonar <clears throat> soundings. It was called Loran back in those days. So basically, every ship that went out on patrol would make a map of their section, and eventually they put together maps of the underwater of the whole world, uh, which doesn't account for the fact that a few years ago, one of our submarines crashed into a mountain underwater and didn't know it was there. So Holy shit. I don't know how that happened. Wow. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> what How do they not know a mountain? Underwater mountain. Already. I'm like, what? <laughs> You've never been scuba diving, obviously. <laughs> not not I have underwater, underwater I mountain. Have, I don't like sharks. I have. It's fucking you, awesome, I, man. Uh, yeah, they have volcanoes under there, too, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. Underwater volcanoes. Yeah. There's a big scuba diving. And the dive, crystal pyramids. Scuba diving off Palancar <laughs> Reef off of the coast of Mexico. You could dive down 100 feet, and you're standing on top of an underwater mountain range. Oh, and wow. the water is so clear that I get agoraphobia standing on top of the mountain. Wow. Whoa. I you're underwater. Shit, you, you're, you're getting like 
yeah. vertigo wow. and stuff. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's, That's fucking cool. cool. I never first, even thought about that. Yeah, the first time I scuba dive. heights when I'm really low. And the first and only time I scuba dive in Mexico, I got I got a vertigo. Like I was halfway down the rope. I was the first one to go down, and I just stood there. And I actually just floated there and just looked up at the ship and then <laughs> the rocks and everything down there. I'm like, holy fuck, I'm floating right now. I'm like, I, it, it was insane, bro. It, yeah. was, it was great, though. And then I freaked out. I went back up and the, and a guy was like trying to calm me down. I said, just let me calm down. And then I went down. I had the best time in the world. Best. It's um, it's cool down there. You know, it's not that, that, <laughs> it's not that hot. You know, the water is just like perfect. It, it, I went mm-hmm. 50, 55 feet only. So it was nice and cool. And then the f- you swim through fish is great, man. Yeah. Best time ever. No sharks. No, uh, no, no sharks. Barracudas though, which uh, sometimes uh, they, they have those crazy. little sand sharks there, which don't bite. They're not, they're yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Okay, sand sharks are good. Yeah, I went to the fucking uh, what do you call it? The place where the fish. <laughs> the, the aquarium. The aquarium. aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> the aquarium. I went. I went. I went, I went with a friend of mine, Rob. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I'm like hungover as fuck, right? And like, we go to the shark exhibit, and I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you, I really don't like sharks. They freak me out. And he was like, oh, okay. And I, and I'm, I'm, in, this is how stupid I am. And I'm, I'm like, there's not like a great white floating around in here, is it? He's just like, he's like, he's like, dude, no, there's no, <laughs> there's no <laughs> great <laughs> white <laughs> shark. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, they've never caught one. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not true either. Yeah, if you sound just as stupid as me, <laughs> never caught yeah, yeah. one. <laughs> I'm like, but they wouldn't have one. And that's yeah. That shit. <laughs> no, they were all like small sharks just floating around. It was yeah. pretty cool. Slow shark. <laughs> what did I say? Yeah. No. Anyway. So what, there was, has, has there been any, at one point down, when you were down there, that you really feared for your life? Everybody. Ev- anybody who's ever been in a submarine has incidents that happen. And okay. The, the thing that you rely on is uh, you're confident that the people you work with know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's why you get that little pin on your chest. Okay. And, um. Right before my last patrol, the USS Thresher sank, which uh, was the first submarine to sank out, sink after World War II. And it was the newest, best, fastest, most advanced submarine that the Navy had. And a month before it sank, the guy who was on, my boss, came onto the ship from the Thresher after having been what they called a plank owner. He was on it from the very beginning when they first started building it, mm-hmm. up until it went to sea on that last patrol. And he came on our ship. And... The Thresher sank right before we went on my last patrol. So everyone said that this guy was a jinx because his father died on a submarine in World War II, and that submarine sank. And they said, "Okay, this patrol, we're going to be in trouble." Shit. Uh huh. And we did. We had a. I don't know if you know how submarines work, but basically they used to be divided into compartments uh-huh. so that any compartment could flood. If the watertight doors were closed, the submarine would be able to surface. Okay. The problem with the ship that I was on, when the a Cuban Missile Crisis happened and Bay of Pigs. Uh, we needed to retaliate or show Russia that we had some balls at the time. Yeah. So basically, they took regular submarines, they chopped them in half, and they threw a missile compartment in oh, with shit. 16 missiles. The missile compartment was way too big mm-hmm. for the submarine to ever survive flooding in the missile compartment. That's three layers, and we had 16 missiles in there. So um, – on our last patrol, we had a flooding in the missile compartment, of God course. Damn. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. And um, you're, everybody, you know, you join the Navy. Why do you? Why would you join the Navy? You're 17 years old. You're 18 years old. You need to prove to yourself that you have balls, that you're, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you like the uniforms. You're hoping desperately that you'll get laid because the girls think the uniforms are cool, mm-hmm. even <laughs> if your face is full of pimples and, <laughs> and you can't yeah. get a date yeah. to save your life. Yeah, yeah. And I, I never went in for patriotic reasons, honestly. I went in, I went in because I wanted to get away from home, and I thought the uniforms were cool, and I want to get laid. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, that's honest. honest. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. what most guys want at that age. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's how they get you. That's I how they get you into the military. I think that's how they get you into the military. They're like, come, we're going to give you like, tons al- of pussy. There's yeah. also a thing that you want to <laughs> yeah. test yourself. Yeah. You feel like, mm-hmm. am I going to be the guy that cries when everybody else is doing shit? Uh-huh. Well, I don't want to be that guy. Mm-hmm. So we, everybody, sometime, hopefully, and not kills them, but in the military career where something dangerous happens, and you reach that point, and if you survive that incident, then you have accepted the fact that you accepted death, and then you're no, never afraid of dying again. Okay. And when you accept death and you realize that I didn't fall apart, I didn't get crazy, I didn't st- cry like a little baby, I just did my job, I did what I was supposed to do, and everybody survived, and we're all okay. And then there's a calm that comes after that, that the rest of your life can never equate to that again. 
because you know that you already should have been dead and it was okay. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't scare, hasn't never scared me. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why I'm still here with the lifestyle I live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, see that. I like how you were saying before um, how you were the, the intellectual one and you hated all the dumb people. I didn't hate them. Well, you didn't hate them because they, they hated us. They hated you, <laughs> they right? Hated yeah, because you're no. peeing in their coffee. Well, because I think, <laughs> no, yeah. well, isn't that what happens? And I mean, when a bunch of dudes get together, and the dumb ones always fucking hate the smart ones. Yeah, and generally and in the military, the dumb yeah. ones are in charge because they stay in the longest. Yes. Everybody, everybody's yeah. got a half a brain gets out after a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My I think that my <laughs> military friends are going to hate me for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully they don't. <laughs> well, they'll listen, right? You'll get them to listen. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. In, uh, submarine communities, because <laughs> submarine community is very tight. I'm very. Okay. Uh, very close. They're going to gonna listen down there. And it'll Submariners be like, all over the world. It's going to be like this podcast playing in like a boop. <laughs> <laughs> boop. It's the only entertainment they have on a loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got to say this. Uh, you know, my uh, my roommate from college, he, he married a, a British girl. or Her family was British, but uh, I think her mom was American. Her dad was British, but her dad was a British submarine commander. And, you know, I only met him once at, at the wedding. And, it was, you know, like as far as, you know, when you meet people, that guy was like, I can't, he was like the one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life, you know, because, you know, he was, I mean, he was probably in a great mood. His daughter's getting married and stuff, but he just told me, he just had this thing about life. I can't even explain it. Like this kind of, maybe it's what you were just saying about like not having that fear of death, having yeah. been to that that threshold, you know, and, and, and just, you know, it, it worked out. And, and when you said that, it just made me think about him. Wow, that guy was incredible i can't uh, unfortunately i can't remember his name it was like 20 years ago but uh at the same time like uh my friend joel married a, a woman named sarah and my girlfriend was supposed to fly in to vegas and her name was sarah too and we were roommates in college so everyone was like oh we, we can't wait to meet your sarah <laughs> that, 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 you know british people you know they were like oh this is great coincidence and you know blah 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 yeah i like beans and she uh <laughs> <laughs> She didn't, she didn't. How do we feel about the queen? <laughs> so everyone was like ready to meet her at that breakfast, and turned out that she missed the only flight that was coming out. She missed the whole thing. And he was just, and I was really disappointed. And he was the coolest dude about it. Like he just, he basically, he was like walking me around, kind of like telling me, like, dude, forget about her. Look at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a this is like a playground of beautiful women. <laughs> so if she's going to do that to you, then, you know. And I, to this day, I appreciate that. But yeah, I, yeah. I'm saying that, like, you have this. It, it just occurred to me that that's the quality that you have as well. And uh, you know, I, 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 that's why you know the way we know each other is through this bar I worked at. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a grassroots. Yeah, yeah, grassroots. Grassroots. It, it, it's a, it's a tremendous quality that I, it's even hard to put into words. You know what I mean? You have yeah, to yeah. kind of experience. Is it. grassroots shutting down? Oh, it's it, done. It's gone. It's gone. New Year's it, Day was the last day. Really? That bar was fucking awesome. We were there the last day. Really? To yeah, I I mean I, that's where I met you. Rob introduced yeah, me yeah. to you, and um, that was the bar that it was basically beer and a shot. Fucking where bartenders that? with yeah. tattoos. Where was that? That's it, right, it, yeah, St. Mark's. St. Mark's. Yeah, dude, I drank there, and I didn't ever pay that much. It was pretty nice. It was well, good. That, you got you know. drunk as shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love bars like that. I love a, yeah, I love a bar. I like a, I like a bar when you walk in. And if you go, can I have like a mixed a drink? And the bartender's like, what? It's either two <laughs> ingredients. And that's it. I like I like the beer. I didn't live through a submarine to give you a mai tai. Well, I mean, that's how I drink. It's a fucking beer and a shot. When yeah. I start when I started working I'm... there, it was two seventy five for a cocktail. Two seventy five. Wow. See, more places like this in New York need to exist. We need to find these places because Those it's getting, are $5. Too, it's oh, getting too expensive. Say, I made a, a serious mistake when I okay. had an article about me in the New York Times uh, two years ago, and I stupidly mentioned four bars that I used to frequent that were di good, cheap dive bars. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, all these people with buns on. And, uh, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> the man buns. A lot yeah. of opinions are coming, yeah, yeah. coming over from Williamsburg for cheap drinks and the cruise girls with tattoos. Oh, and I shit. said, oh, man, I'll never do that again. Yeah, because it's no. getting too expensive over in Williamsburg to drink now and to live. So they're all coming back over to Manhattan. It's going to get Fuck cheaper, em. though. They're shutting the L train yep. down. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's going to sell over there cheap, and now's a good mm -hmm. time to buy if you got any money. Oh, shit. That's and you got any money, Mike? No. <laughs> People no. forget. Yeah. We can get a shut slice it down of... 14th Street, too, to traffic. Should have shut it down already. Wait, the, wait Union What's Square? See, no, East the entire West. 14th Street in Manhattan will be shut down to traffic when they shut down the L train. 
respond. Oh yeah, right. Because that's where they're working. Vehicular traffic. There will only be buses. Oh. All right. Can and we like? We, people need to leave. I think it's too yeah. crowded. I know. I'll leave. <laughs> yeah, <hurry>. Call <laughs> up Elon Musk. Get us yeah. the spaceships. We'll yeah, leave. We'll come back. Why don't we start making cloud cities, Elon Musk? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Lando Calrissian had one. No, Why not us? They'll block the sunshine, you fucks. We could rent submarines. <laughs> you now. sounded... That yeah. was the, uh, <laughs> It'll block the sunshine. <laughs> Fucker. Yeah, I don't want to go to the beach, motherfucker. <laughs> it was the hippie yeah, I know you love the, to go to the beach. He loves the beach. Need to go to the beach. Don't fucking block the beach, son. No. Well, the reason Philip had that article in the New York Times was because... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. He wrote a book. Oh, oh you wrote a book. Okay, what... I have a book, which I... Just happened to bring along two copies. I didn't nice. Be oh, cool. Uh, it's called Confessions of a Repeat Offender. Oh, I like it. It came out in January 2016, uh, and uh, it uh, did very well on Amazon for a while. Now it's kind of peaked. But uh, basically, I've been telling stories in bars and open mics uh, for years, and I finally just put them all in a book and threw it out there and uh, got pretty good reception for That's it. Nice. Awesome. What's it called again? Confessions of a Repeat Offender. It's available on Amazon for okay. $15. Cool. That's yeah. doable. If you, if you catch me at an open mic or a book party, you can get it for 10 bucks. Oh, shit. Yeah, with no yeah. tax. With no tax. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, the police. No sovereign tax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those so, IRS guys, you know. <laughs> Keith, actually, Mike has seen Philip before. Yeah. At, oh, really? Uh, inspired yeah. Word. Uh, inspired, inspired Word. Inspired Word. Mike's. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's a small, small. No, sorry. No, it is. <laughs> small city. And then yeah. we're in it. So we're coming. Yeah, I ran a, sh- a, uh-huh. a, a show at uh, Three of Cups Lounge. You know where that is? Yeah. We know Three yeah. of Cups. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That shut down recently too. Right. They, oh my God. They closed up. I lost my. Vi- I had a show there. I uh, hosted an open mic for a spoken word for five years, Jeez. and uh, just coincidentally on our fifth anniversary. Three of Cups closed. It was their last night on the th- on our fifth anniversary. So hmm. we're putting together an anthology of all of the people who ever featured there, which is over 200 people, but we've had over 120 submissions. Okay. And so we're hoping to come out with an anthology. And we're also looking to have the people comment a little bit about the changes they saw in the East Village during that five-year time period because there's been significant changes happening in the neighborhood. What, what, Definitely what, uh, what yeah. years? Would be 2013 to 2018. Would be gotcha. five years. Yeah. What? Where do you find um, where they can people can look at your like description of your show and stuff? Uh, on Facebook, it's okay. uh, uh, Rhymes of the Ancient Mariner was the name of the show. Rhymes it's, of the it Ancient a, Mariner. Its own group uh, page on Facebook, mm-hmm. and uh, you can look at me, Ancient Mariner Tales, uh, mm-hmm. also on Facebook, and uh, I have a video out. Do you? Yes, uh, there's a. It's me fucking hookers on the <laughs> <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> it's a departure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, Go ahead. It's, it's incredible when you you know you see celebrities all the time, Alex Baldwin punching reporters and stuff, or mm-hmm. punching people who are trying to harass him and stuff. And I had you know half a minute of fame in the New York Times, mm-hmm. and you'd be amazed at the type of people that are looking for a way to make money off you somehow, as mm-hmm. though you become a commodity rather than a person now. And I had people who wanted to have me do dive bars tours of the East Village to take them to all the bars okay. that I, you know, where I hang out and like embarrass my friends in front of tourists or something. <laughs> Shit. And, and yeah, <laughs> some monetize. Other, some other person wanted, wanted me to do, wanted me to do like a Johnny Carson type of dive bar East Village show where I would invite my crazy drunken friends on and we would all make fools of ourselves, you know, on uh, on live podcasts, uh, which I. So it was it was amazing. But some of the good things that came out of that is a. A uh, guy came up to me, and he said, uh, I'm a filmmaker. Turns out he's a very good filmmaker, and he's a pretty famous photographer. He just shot a lot of famous. And he asked if he could do a, a, a movie about me. So I said, yeah, nice. okay. And then after he read my book and saw some of the things I did online, he decided that he wanted to try something different. He specialized in documentaries, and instead of doing a documentary, he did a video of me reading one of my poems, which is about gentrification in New York. Okay. And we filmed it in location all around. And uh, we got 4,000 hits in one week on wow. the video. Cool. We, we, is it a short film or like a feature yeah, of all your poems? Five, or? five minutes. Five okay. Minutes. All of the f- movies being made in New York now are all under 10 minutes because Millie's don't have any attention span. So <laughs> nobody's going <laughs> to sit Millie's. through an hour movie. Yeah, Millie's. Did you say Millie's? Yeah. Is that how they call them, Millie's? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it is I like now. It. Yeah. It was too I like cool. a Millie's. Millie's. Yeah. They don't they want Millie's now. They're not going to watch an hour movie. No. 10 minutes is it. That's it. 10 minutes is it. Yeah. So, my, yeah. That's available on YouTube. 
that that's called uh, Boho's Lament. It's on YouTube. Boho's it's on Vimeo. Lament. Boho's Lament. Boho's Lament, which was basically, uh, you guys probably don't even know what a boho is, right? Please enlighten us. <laughs> okay. Uh, I grew up in between bohemians who were called beatniks and hippies. Mm -hmm. Okay, beatniks are like um, the intellectuals. 50, like Jack, Her Jack Kerouac, yeah, yeah. Allen Ginsberg. Ginsberg. That, whole, yeah, yeah. that was all big movement in New York. When I was a teenager was living in Philadelphia, I was enthralled with those guys. I just mm -hmm. wanted to be them, you know. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be those guys, be guys traveling around the world. Hot, stealing cars, doing crazy shit, smoking. <laughs> was, was George Carlin considered a beatnik probably no, back no, then? He was too young for He was that. more He's of a young. hippie. No. He was more of a hippie, yeah. okay. The hippies were, I mean, the beatniks the were The pseudo-intellectual, like the pseudo-intellectual. Like pseudo yeah, and they used to have poetry readings in the Gaslight in the Westville, in the East, in West okay. Village. And uh, it was a movement. And my dream, I started subscribing to the Village Voice when I was like 15 years old when it first came out. Mm -hmm. And I solicited WR Radio. I lived in Philly, and I wanted to mm -hmm. be in New York. I want to be a beatnik. I want to be those guys. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got to New York, the beatniks were gone, <laughs> and the hippies were moving in. Mm -hmm. And the hippies used to call the leftover beatniks bohos for short for <laughs> bohemians. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So boho became kind of like a racist kind of thing, like it was kind of like okay. derogatory. Huh. Like it, bohos are all drunks and bums and stuff, you know. Oh, okay. So I took that as a as a badge of pride if they called me a boho. So the character in my new book is named Boho. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I always see him can we in the see, street. Can we see the book? Can I show it to the camera? I always see him in the street. I could be walking with my girl uh, after brunch. I always see him in the East Village. Always. Really? Yeah. All right. So, ooh, I like the artwork, dude. Yeah, it's a great cover. The girl who cool. does my tattoos does the covers. Her name's yeah. Linda Walken. Cool. Rivington Tattoo. That's Linda's work? Yeah. I, Linda, I never knew that Linda until does, now. You want to see that she, she, she's doing watercolors for my new book. Okay. The Amorous Adventures of Blondie and Boho. Amorous Adventures of Blondie. I'm trying to... Okay, can I'm I... Gonna I'm going to give you guys these, but don't read anything from them on the air. Okay, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much, dude. This is They're awesome. submarine secrets. I'm actually um, trying to write a book right now, and how do you fucking do it? <laughs> 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 no, it's so... I think it's because... Do you use a typewriter? No. No. Use a computer. Yeah. How do you not? I have to like take acid to like concentrate and just like keep writing. Write drunk, edit sober. Write Hemingway. drunk, edit Hemingway. sober. Write yes, drunk, yes, edit yes. sober. M M Ernest Hemingway. I'm gonna get some beer on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I I no. can't give anybody yeah. instructions because I, I'm you know most of my friends are academic writers and mm -hmm. they attend workshops and they go to camps and things and they write. I can't write on demand. Like if you say you know mm -hmm. write me a story about uh, Keith, I can't do that. Yeah, write yeah, me a yeah. Script. I, I, yeah. I have to lay around for a couple weeks, listen to some music. Uh, in the middle of the night, I'll wake up, and I'll have a story in my head. And then yeah, I just yeah, get yeah. Up and Which is how the Beatnik guys wrote. Like, Kerouac would just do, go do crazy shit, and then he'd be like, I should write down what I did today, but and I, it would I, become I, on the road. I have no idea where it comes from. Yeah, it just happens, and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just watching it. And put type, See, put my, my laptop is broken. And the other day, I had that crazy urge, I have to fucking write right now. And I'm like, it's fucking broken. It comes to you randomly. And, and it usually comes to me pencil. like two it's in the fucking morning. Muses. Pen and no, paper. Pen and paper, but like it's just, you Muses can't flow are like that, man. You, can. yep. you fucking write? Yes. Do you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Back to angry <laughs> promo <laughs> corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's very interesting. I like to hear Muses what Muses uh, fuck with you all the time. Like, oh, yeah. When you, when you want to write, you can't write. Something's going to come out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I didn't write anything for like four or five months. And then I wake up and I have this whole story in my head about a Jewish kid from Brooklyn. I'm not Jewish, I'm mm -hmm. Italian. Mm -hmm. And his, uh, his girlfriend and, and a cat that worked at a bodega most of its life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the story that I'm writing about Blondie and Boho are two East Village writers, artists, and all of their friends are like survivor kind of cool people, you know? Mm -hmm. Even though uh, Blondie dies at the end of the book because of gentrification. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't yeah, say that, I was yeah, gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new characters in my new book, they don't have the tools to survive. They're artistic people, and uh, Lucky and Lulu and the cat all wind up dying at the end of that book. And what I was trying to do was balance out. Keith knows all the people we know that it didn't make it, and mm -hmm. all the people that did make it. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to show two different stories of survivors and people who didn't have the skill set to make it, even though they were good people. So I thought the two books would balance out my life in the East Village. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, it, it's when did you, when did you, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, when did you write this one? It's called Love Born in Retrograde? Yes, uh, I have to give you a little confession. Okay. Uh, 
I have a lady friend, mm -hmm. and for her birthday last year, I put together a bunch of poems that I had written about her, and I published them, and I gave them to her for her birthday. And she said, wow, this is really incredible. We need to publish this. I said, it's a lot of stuff in there that I don't think you really want people to see. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of pornographic kind of stuff. Or That's stuff. the best shit, though. Oh, right. I know, I women know. love that shit, man. I know, but... So I cut out about 15 pages out of the book, and I mm -hmm. put it up on uh, Amazon. Some of the poems are originally in this book, and I rewrote them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of them are new. So I didn't feel it was appropriate to publicize them <coughs> a lot and, or charge a lot for it. So it's for five ninety five, and it's basically an erotic love story. It's, it traces my relationship with this particular person. Uh, yeah, they die at the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's it, there's some there's some vaguely erotic stuff and some yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. quasi pornographic things in there. A yeah. little bit. I like that. Just that one little line. I Dude, I'm a su I'm a sucker for fucking writing ladies love shit and sexy stuff. You could read a line. We do. I mean, I do it through text now, pretty much. Which I don't. Can feel I read one line? That yeah, great. Yeah, read one line. Yeah, read one line. You have a nice dick for an old man. That was one line. That 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 that. What was it? Oh man, what, I lost it now. Uh, Dead air. Dead. No, we're I'm kidding. Talk, I don't care. Talk away. <laughs> we're waiting for you, motherfucker. There is some tension in that side of the room. <laughs> no, this is how we talk King. to each other. <laughs> there you go. Here's, here's, a, here's a line. I'm hungry, too. Poetry horse. I'm about to get face raped at, at the dark end of the, of the bar. There you go. <laughs> that's a great line. I'm about to get face raped. By, I just uh, like that opening. Uh, just yeah, goes, yeah. That's, that's that, that one is called poetry horse. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So this one, Confessions of a Repeat Offender. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like the self portrait. That's Linda Walken. Okay. And this is. The artist, right? You yes. said. And these are just, these are just a bunch of short stories. She did poems. All, she did, short stories and poems. She did all of my tattoos. She's doing all, really? the, all of the artwork for my uh, my new book. Can I, can I read something? Yeah, sure. Open mic for the disenfranchised. I'm an open mic gypsy. We're the wannabes, the almost famous, the has been famous. And they're never going to be famous. We're the next wave, the new wave, and for some of us, this is an endless wave. So what I put I've on heard my this one before. I've heard this one. I've heard this, this one. This is stand-up comedy. I've right lived here, that. Man. I've heard that one. <laughs> I heard him do that. I like one. that. Too yeah. real. You've heard that one before. Yeah, yeah. I see him do that one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I do open mic a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We should come check you out. Yeah. Which, what's, what's one do you go to the most in the city? Uh, Parkside, probably. Parkside. I, I do Cornelia Street Cafe. Uh -huh. I do. Um, I used to do 13th Street University. Mm -hmm. You do uh, storytelling mics? Yeah. Parkside is at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock Mondays and Tuesdays. Mondays and Tuesdays. Yeah. Ins oh. Inspired words. Oh, like I said, before. yeah, I was there before. Right. Okay. And yeah, and if you go, they take pictures of you on stage for ten bucks, right? Yeah. 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 But can you, if you don't want pictures, do you have to pay still? No, you don't have to pay. No. Oh, okay. You pay to get in. You pay for to get the mic space. The pictures, they don't charge you for the pictures. Oh, Pictures okay. just come with it. Yeah. Marvin Menlinger, the associate producer, takes all the pictures. Mm. I would like some pictures, though, for $10. Yeah, though. I got some nice ones on there at the Gaslight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is really cool. Because that's, that's cool. such a wonderful, like, place of music history. So I was like, oh, I have pictures of me doing comedy at the Gaslight. That's so cool. Yeah, nice. yeah, They're yeah. on my Facebook. Yeah. At my show, uh, Rhymes of the Ancient Mariner, I did videos of everybody who featured and everyone who was on mo open mic, and, and I put them on YouTube. There's like, I think, over 800 videos up there. And it wasn't a matter of uh, making you look like a star. Uh, I thought it was a valuable learning tool. Like for me, I video everything I do when I'm writing. Oh, do Okay. And and uh, you say, what? Well, wow, I was stuttering, or I was shaking, or I was moving from side to side, or I didn't notice that I wasn't in the light, or I don't know where the microphone is, or uh, that should have been a three-minute piece, and it was like two minutes and 15 seconds. I was talking too fast. The video is a really, really helpful training tool I found. So that, yes, indeed. And the people who did the open mics at my show valued that. They really did. I think that's why I had such good response from people. Wow. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. So before we wrap it up, again, um, you want to the, the, the Facebook pages read? and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everybody can, <laughs> everybody can hear you. Again. Plug your latest submarine yeah, patrol. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what submarine was that? No, 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 no. Your Facebook pages and stuff like this. My like Facebook pages. Uh, my Facebook page. A lot of our listeners live in the city, so they can Philip come Giambri. 
is on Facebook as Philip Giambri. Mm-hmm. Uh, my character, the Ancient Mariner, is on Ancient Mariner Tales page, mm-hmm. and Rhymes of the Ancient Mariner covers my show and uh, has links to all the videos uh, of all the people that featured at my show mm-hmm. and has information on the anthology. I'm also associate producer on a show called Intrusion mm-hmm. by Quaradon Kadwani that you might remember from Inspired Word over at... Uh, McDougal Park. Street and stuff. Uh, she has a one-woman solo show called Intrusion that's doing really, really well. And um, I've been helping out with that as associate producer. So I've been nice. pl- plugging that, too. She's a really, really talented lady. Uh, she's Check an Indian out. girl who was raised in the Bronx in a Spanish and black neighborhood. And she does characters in two of her solo shows that are, like, spot on from all of the people awesome. she's ever met in her life. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so intrusion is about rape. It's not a it's not a good subject, but oh. it's a very timely subject. It's okay. Yeah. We're gonna start doing more intrusion jokes on this podcast. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't, we did a lot on the last one. Yes, we did, yeah, yeah, we did, I, yeah, I don't think yeah. you want to laugh at that show. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyhow I got all my plugs in. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks Keith. thanks for being here. Yes. Um You guys are fun. Thank you. We, yeah, we are very happy. Thank you for coming, man. It's, we really appreciate this. It's very interesting. I Keith, look pretty good for 35, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Keith, do you, do you still, are you working on a short film at the moment? Yeah, still? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Savannah Juno Moore. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, we're going to try to shoot that in May. And um, everything's plugging along, along right now. And uh, mm-hmm. next time I'm on, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who, who we've cast. We nice. Hopefully, next. hopefully know that in next 60 days or so. Don't okay, I think you're on next week, though, aren't you? Yeah, so maybe so I won't be no. able to tell you. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> yeah, so what about your social media handles? If you Do you want followers, or I don't know? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, just uh, Keith Summers on YouTube. That's what I got right now, but okay. you know, I'm working on that. Okay, yeah. great. Alex Fasella, do it. All right, I'm at A Fasella, A-F-O-S-S-E-L-L-A, on Twitter. I have another podcast called Modern Day Philosophers. Tony Hawk was the last episode. We talked about Proust with him. <laughs> And then I started another podcast called Broadway Baby, where I learned about musicals. With his, with friends. my two musical theater yeah, friends. Yeah. <laughs> ah. yeah. Mike, I am uh, at Funny Hernandez and Twitter and, <laughs> and Instagram. Also, Pop Your Paro. Don't forget. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're gonna do that. We're gonna. Don't re- tell me what. We're gonna do this don't whole tell thing me what at the end. This has just been the, like a, a nice sandwich. You could cut that I'm, tension. Yeah, yeah. This He's is gonna. My yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what about New York Silly? New York Silly. Dot com. Don't forget that. What is it? It's a. Uh, it's a website. It's a fucking website. <laughs> You're so <laughs> mad. You're just so look, mad. Look, look, look. Come on. Come it's on. just bubbling. <laughs> I don't know. It's a. It's a goddamn website, man. Are we trying? Are we trying to produce shows? And we're working on some shows, so that'll uh, be good. Yeah, yeah. Pay attention. Yeah, he's yeah. hangry. I am hangry. Yeah, as yeah. The yeah. Kids, as there. the millies say, it's also getting hot in here too. Um, <laughs> How about you? I want to go. No, I want to go right, right now. Um, at Caleb Stuff is my Instagram. At Caleb Thoughts is my Twitter. Check out my website, Caleb, Caleb Barge. Thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Caleb Thought Juice. Yeah, no, Caleb Thoughts. Uh, check out my website, CalebBarge.com, like the boat. <laughs> the barge. Oh, yeah. Barge. Um, the barge. I got to write my future shows up. I got into the Harlem Comedy Festival. It's gonna. I'm gonna be performing. I know on the 23rd. That's the first round. Except. September 23rd. Yes. And then uh, I got into the Trial by Laughter Comedy Festival in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I. It's for the October 11th through 14th. We're gonna be. I guess featured on Comcast on demand. Dope. Our sets, yeah. So that'd be cool, and maybe possibly on Sirius XM Radio. Cool. Nice. Cool. Um, Mike's coming with me. Yes, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. We're to- trying. We gotta get. We're getting the money. We'll get the money together. Yeah. I, I, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want, I, I want somebody to go. And also, I was reading in the email they're gonna have like cool stuff for us to do during the day. That we can like network and shit like that, so we don't have to be wandering around Indianapolis being like, <laughs> "What's good to eat here?" <laughs> I mean, I was, they're gonna make you work yeah, on a submarine. Yeah. I was, yeah. and I was yeah. just gonna do that yeah. right away, bro. I was looking for shit to eat. I know that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. they're not famous for. You the- go to the mall anyway. Any- <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, bro. arcades. They have arcades there still. We'll find out. Anyway, um, our Instagram is at We're Going to Hell Podcast. Uh, our Twitter is at WGTH Podcast. Uh, Hey, Mike, do we have some sponsors or what? <laughs> Back yeah, yeah, poppyapparel.com, uh, code, uh, code word, <laughs> code word Ravenwolf. Uh, and, uh, oh, How much, do, what do we get if you? 20%. No. 
Uh huh. <laughs> buffalo wings. Alex is fucking dying. Three percent off <laughs> buffalo wings. Uh, buffalo wild yeah. wings. Uh, ten ten percent, ten percent. You didn't make him say how much before, and it's like you say to the end, be like, "What? What? Well, how much do we get?" I'm like, "Oh, you move the goalposts. I was smart. You're fucking. You're in his head now." Um, ten percent off. Um, with the code buffalo Raven wings. Wolf. Yeah. Popyapparel.com. 10% off with the code Ravenwolf. Uh-huh. Don't forget that. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, I don't know, the wooden. <laughs> the wooden? The wood? <laughs> the wood. What? Wooden sauces? The hot Heart- sauce. Yeah, the heartbreaking dawn. Heartbreaking dawns. Hot sauce. Sauces. Heartbreaking dawns. Heartbreaking dawns.com. They're delicious sauces. <laughs> the one- <laughs> they're fucking mad good. They're good, man. No, they're really good. We had yeah. him on. Uh, check out the episode called the Hot Sauce Day. Pineapple, in, man. In the Louis pineapple habanero. Yeah, really yeah. I love that Hot one, Hot Sauce man. Day and Louis C.K. Check Tracy out that Tracy Jen took that from me. Yes, she did. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, uh, how much? Uh, oh, yeah. Code, <laughs> code, uh, code, code, we go, code we going to hell. Uh-huh. Code we going you to hell. You need to have a training <laughs> montage where you drill it into his head. <laughs> That's not going to work. And he's like running up the stairs we're going actually, like 10% we're off. Poppy gonna apparel. We're going to record commercials for this, by the way, so this will be fun. They better stop paying me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type it out so you can fucking read it. Uh, yeah. Can so, I get a party line in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason my book is called "Confessions of a Repeated oh, yeah, Offender" yeah. is because if you hang around with me long enough, I will repeatedly offend you. Nice. So I'm sure this evening I pissed off some of my old submarine buddies and a few of my old girlfriends. Uh, that's what I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> they could take it. They were yes. they yeah. were in a submarine with you. They could yeah, take exactly. It. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Keith, for coming out. Thank it's you. getting hot in here. we got to get the fuck out. Yeah, man. Let's go. That's been another episode, fantastic episode of We're Going to Hell podcast. We'll fun. see you later. Peace. Right. Next week. Bye. Yeah. Shalom. Woo. That was fun. That yes, was indeed. Really fun. Yeah.